Podcast, Satan's number one most hated show. Why? Because truth is told here. Here is your host, the exorcist himself, GP Haggard. Hello, and welcome to the show. Welcome to the podcast. Um, today you're going to get um, kind of a little treat uh, for you um, folks who are learning about exorcism uh, to become an exorcist, deliverance minister, what have you. Um, looking to help people, genuinely help people. Um, you're going to get um, an audio clip today from uh, a deliverance session I did uh, years ago. I don't normally release any video or audio or anything like that uh, to the public from any deliverances or exorcisms I've done just because of the sole purpose that those, you know, those sex sessions are, are private, they're personal. Um, but with everything that's going on in the paranormal community and um, in the world today, um, I'm starting, and plus I'm a diff different person now since my heart attack, uh, I feel that the, the world needs to start uh, listening. People seem to need to start listening who are involved in mediumship, psychic power, the occult, New Age, Wicca, all that kind of stuff. And just you know, listen uh, to sessions on exorcism and deliverance and inner healing to uh, get a grasp on what is actually happening. Oh, I'm going to adjust a little bit here so I can speak better. Um, now this particular case was a lady here in Michigan and her story is the um, first, we had um, went to her home because the uh, it was a haunting. And usually, when I go into a home that's haunted, I usually look for one particular person, and I ask a lot of questions as an exorcist. And I start feeling people out, asking questions. And I can get right down to who, who is actually possessed. Because even if somebody moves into a haunted house, you know, the spirit's already there, that spirit, rather than being in the house, is going to want to choose one particular person to actually possess, for that person to be in possession of them. That's always the case, and in this this is an interesting case I want to sh I want to reveal because with the whole new age and medium and psychic stuff and talking with the dead, this particular case there was a teenage boy who died, approximately the same age as this lady's daughter, and. So they wanted to contact this boy and so they used a Ouija board 
I did a seance, and you can kind of get to hear the different types of uh, call elements that they used. And John Mueller, who's a demonologist, joined me in on that, and he identified a particular type of a call practice that the that the people used to bring the spirit about. And so when the spirit of it came about, it portrayed itself, it disguised itself very, um, very, very well as this boy. And you'll 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 learn that um, the all these people used their hair in this call practice, and even used um, this lady's hair, and which was the initial point upon an encroachment that caused the spirit to possess her. So that's how the spirit got in her. Now, in religious provocation, trying to find the, uh, the spirit, the demon, to uh, find out where it is, what it's doing. We ask a lot of questions. And so you're going to hear me asking a lot of questions, trying to feel out emotionally how she is doing. Um, anything changes, I ask another question. And she is actually helping me out to help understand the situation so I can help her. And so she is at the initial stage and the whole counseling before there was a lot of counseling sessions and where we were we've been talking and um, counseling her trying to get her because as an exorcist we want to get the person strong enough so that they can banish the demon and so she's at this midpoint now and we've, we've never encountered the demons before that were that um, but they they were elusive, non-literal. You know, they would uh, raise and lower the temperature in the home. You feel kind of a, a static feeling. They would do some poltergeist uh, type um, stuff in the home, that kind of thing. And they were causing a lot of misfortune to her. She actually developed cancer, and then went into remission. And then the cancer started coming back, and you, you actually can hear her talking about that. One of the things was that she had um, a heart problem. And um, we really tried to um, do things delicately in deliverance and exorcism with people with health problems, especially with a heart problem. And so our plan was to gather enough evidence I was going to help John to gather enough evidence to try and get these demons to come forward and um, so that um, he can gather the evidence and we can take that to the uh, Saginaw Diocese and the Catholic Diocese because she is Catholic and help to get through all the red tape so that um, we can get her uh, and help the help a priest with uh, ex an exorcism uh, background and assist them to get um, something moving so that uh, we can get these spirits cast out. But, and you'll hear as the, 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 as you listen, you can start to hear things change over time. So um, I'm really feeling things out, I'm talking to her you know, softly to try to keep the situation soft. Um, and um, John and is in the background actually with a blessed cross and he puts the cross at the at that initial point and you'll, you'll identify when it happens. Uh, right behind her neck without her knowledge um, she starts to have a headache, she starts to feel a little chilly and that's the initial identification that, okay, she is 100% in possession of demons. And then at that point, with that knowledge, we 
I tend to proceed with trying to bring them forward. I didn't want to deal with them as in trying to cast them out, um, but there is uh, at a point where um, a few of them, we believe, did come out because of the strength of the blessing from oil that I had from the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the very ground where Jesus was entombed. Uh, was so powerful that they just didn't want to deal with it and they left. And so you actually witness a form of ecbolism. Um, so ecbolism is actually casting the evil spirits out by the authority of Jesus Christ. Um, without even the need of trying to make the uh, demons say an oath before God of its own banishment. Uh, fortunately these occult spirits which are very powerful, just got scared and ran. And that's what we really want them to do. So you get to witness some, some uh, ecbolism. So at the initial point, and in uh, who's actually recording this is, was one of my students at the time. He's now a, uh, an exorcist. Uh, his name's Clay Scott. And he was recording it. And John and I didn't hear the hiss. Uh, but the woman did, she caught it, and uh, she asked us if we heard the hiss, and, and uh, Clay said that he did. He, he described that he did hear the hiss. And that is at a point in which um, they're getting really frustrated with me as an exorcist being there. They know that I have the capability of casting them out and putting them somewhere that they didn't want to be and they would lose all rights over the lady which they didn't want to lose and um, they were really afraid that they were going to lose all capability of trying to ruin her life and that kind of thing. Um, so and then uh, at the point in which John pushes puts the cross across even closer to her neck, they just come forward. They start to come forward to try and stop the whole situation, to try and cause fear in the room. And really nobody, John, Clay, and I, we were not afraid. And, um, but we were more concerned for the well-being and health and safety of this lady. And so I was trying to try, trying to get them to go down, push them down by the authority of Jesus Christ, and get her to come back up. And because I really didn't want to deal with them, we were just shooting for evidence. And they weren't going down. And so I pushed the envelope and got out a flamethrower, <laughs> so to speak in the, uh, in, in the uh, oil that was blessed in the Church of Holy Sepulchre and it just it pretty much scared them and they ran and they were cast out but there is a point in which when they were coming out of her that uh, they were so mad about the whole situation that they had to leave that they actually were choking her and, um, and we actually had witnessed what looked like indentions of somebody's hand around her throat as, uh, as they were leaving. And uh, fortunately, we were able to get them to let go, and they finally let go and they left. And then you describe, and she describes afterwards how light she felt, how better she felt, but she did feel weak. And at that point, um, it's pretty much that they were using a lot of her energy to manifest. The dryer wasn't off, so there's no reason for it to fall off. I turned around and everything was off. I'm like, probably doing stuff too that we don't just to let you know that we'll, we'll probably provoke them that uh, we're not, I gotta let you know what, what it is but just to let you know that it, it's called religious provocation it's called what? religious provocation 
using religious objects pretty much to, to do, you know, just to see how they react. That's pretty much it. She said you can record. She said you can record. Oh, okay. That's a pretty much what he'll, he's going to be doing is he's got an amplifying a recorder, which will pick up pick them up if they're talking. Like if they're like if they're talking just to me, Man, or what do you mean? Talking anywhere. Nervous. I am. Um, I just got like a really just a like my heart's just kind of racing, and I'm just feeling just. Bad no, this is different. This is like anxiety, a, maybe. Yeah. yeah. What? What is that? Why do I feel so anxious? Um. Yeah, that's not a good. I I've dealt with anxiety for a long time. It, it gets me every once in a while, no. but it's been a little while. Is it because of the situation that I'm yeah, dealing with? Yeah, could right? have a lot to do with it. Yeah, could have a lot. That's yes. Because it seems like heightened ever since he told me that he was coming and 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 bringing people here. It's like it was just like uh, a sensation of panic. Like no, they can't come. They can't. No, don't don't let him come here. No, he doesn't want them coming. And those aren't my thoughts because right. he's my friend and he's always welcome here. So it's it's like something else. It's, it's not my own thoughts that's saying that they don't want it, you guys here. So it's just it's just um, yeah. She's like my sister. What? <laughs> She's like my sister. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. As you you know do deliverance, you know you start developing. Tracy Bacon, he spend, likes to spend the night with people just to get the grasp of what, what you know, how the family interacts and he's friends with a lot of people and a lot of families. I think he's setting them up, he's setting them up for the danger it's in, in homes. But all I'm going to do today is just to, because How's your cancer? Well, I'm supposed to go July 10th for surgery, but with the bleeding and everything, I'm bruising. They have to do like a pro time on me to see what my bleeding factor is to see if I'm the coagulation's okay. Oh, I've got to take my shoes off. Oh, you're fine. It's it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. How are you emotionally? I feel depressed. Right. This just this is so embarrassing to me that I have this going on in my life. It's just like, just crazy. Well, you know I've been with this, that's before. It is embarrassing. No, but it's not like <laughs> something I like to talk to people about because yeah. nobody can relate. And if you talk to somebody about it, they're like, you're crazy. You know, I've, I've made the mistake of like talking to people about it, like other friends, and they're like, no, that doesn't happen. You're crazy, it's all in your head. Yeah. It's like, come stay in my home, see what happens. You know, live in my body and experience everything that my, me and my family have experienced, and then you judge. Don't judge before when you don't know. You know, it's just so. It's just really tough because I don't. I can't relate to anybody. Yeah, I went through um, quite a bit after mine. Mm -hmm. I just um, I didn't know I was before. It happened. Mm -hmm. I look back, I knew it was. Just the way I was acting. Um, at that initial moment when they said the people witnesses there they saw this whole black mass and it just like shrunk right now into me. And I, I was a different person. So you're not the only one. You know, if that happened, there's other people that had, had happened to them and I've seen people that are far worse than what you were going through. It it kind of, I mean, it makes me feel like a mental case because I feel like I'm two different people. Like when my daughter tells me, you did this and you said this, and I have no recollection of all it, that it happened, it makes me feel so bad. It makes me feel insane that I can't remember mm -hmm. the stuff. 
and then I just com you know apologize over and over again because that's not something I would do or say to my daughter. You know, uh, you know, I've lost relationships because of this. I've I've just I've had so much misfortune in my life because of this. It's just it's been nothing but misfortune, and it's in every area of my life, every area, financial, relationships, happiness, health, everything. Yeah. Sounds familiar. Yeah, I got sick quite a bit after my possession. I'm coming down with sinusitis. Colds, flu, strep throat, tonsillitis. They trying to come through? No, I just I keep having back pain. I constantly have back pain, and it's just just it hurts. Oh, can you hear them now? Are they saying anything? I can't hear anything. Not right now. Okay. I did earlier when I was talking to you, oh. and I hate that because I don't like the language. I don't. You know, we don't swear in here, you know, we, neither one of us swear, me and my daughter. And when I hear these words in my head, it's like, who is this? You know, that's, that's not something that I would think or want to say. And it's just, it's awful. To me, it's just awful. Um, how are your teeth? My teeth? <laughs> They're yeah. sore. Are they? Yeah. They're better, I mean considering how they were after you were here the last time. They did not want to speak. Huh? <laughs> they did not want to say anything after. I felt so bad that my daughter saw that, she says, because she can't get it out of her head. Like, she's just, she said, I just, she can't forget it. How old is your daughter? She's 19. Are they coming back here? The Sunday. Well, he won't be back until the 18th, but she's coming back tomorrow. So you're by yourself? I was gonna bless Carter and do something to, to keep them from going on the generations. I thought that that would be helpful. To yeah. prevent them, so I was hoping that he would be here. Because now she started having health problems, and she's got to have surgery. And it's like we don't need this. We got to get rid of this. My daughter, um, the last time you were here, you had said something about. Um, did you want to sit down? Did you want to chair or something? No, not yet. Okay. Um, it says something about the cult and like the voodoo and like curses and stuff like that. Remember how you mentioned like curses? Mm -hmm. My daughter told me, remember how they did like the whole seance thing, her and her friend? She told me something about her friend when she cut her hair all off, took a braid of her hair, like a, like a little bit of her hair. And then when I had had my hair cut, my daughter liked to play with my hair, so I gave her a piece of my hair when I had it cut really short. Yeah. So I let her have, let her have some of it. Well, her friend took some of my hair too. And then when they stopped being friends, she said something to Megan like, "You're going to have nothing but bad luck." So. Wicked. What What would that be? Well, they, they, her friend. Was so we looked it up. What? What was her friend into? The, the occult? Yeah. And she yeah, married. her sister was just a real dark individual. Okay. Um, they hung with uh, just a really scary group. They listened to like um, sadistic music and and just, I said, you're not going over there to their house. I never let Megan go anywhere. And the girl came to our home a couple of times, but then when she cut her hair all off, I forbid her to ever come over again because, I mean, she just hacked her hair all up. Jeez. And took her hair yes. when she left. That other side of the Wiccans, you know, which X. well, they got the religious side where they pray, they just believe in Mother Earth and all that stuff, and then you got the other side where they perform magic and all that good stuff. There's two different sides to it. Yeah, I got to learn about a lot of that stuff. I forgot. There's the gardeners and then there's the uh, yeah, they but they will they'll they'll do hexes, curses, all that stuff. So Everything. Yeah. It's got a lot to do with hair. They'll put hair in candles, burn the candles. Can that cause like health problems? Can that cause like them for to come? I don't know. I, I make it worse. Me, I got nailed by it a long time ago. Um, a coven of witches. They wanted me to let them into a building that I was guarding. You know, I was a security guard, and I told them I couldn't do it. And they got me with seven years bad luck. Actually, longer than that. Cause, oh man. 
I've got a ton of bad luck, and everything that can go wrong just goes. Usually, that's what it is. It's it's a it's certain horror. curse that they've got that'll just you, that'll get you a bad luck. Do you guys have any objects from no. when you were known? Mm -mm. No. Well, the jewelry box that the hair was in. The jewelry box. Mm -hmm. Where's that? Down in the basement. Can you get it? Yeah. Everything she's talking about is reminding me of a lot of stuff. Like the, the Wiccan thing, the witches, call them witches. Yeah, and then you talk about Hastings? Huh? Talk about yeah. Hastings? Hastings, I was telling you about Hastings. I've actually tried to talk to people about getting out that they won't let you do it for nothing. For nothing. I'd like to get a hold of the manufacturer and then get into one of them warehouses again. Um, that that was the worst poltergeist activity I've ever seen in my life. I drugged the plant manager and everybody from up there to see it. They're like, lock this up, don't come back in here. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Some of the hair is actually still in there that she took from her. How did you feel when you went down and got that? Uh, I took a I'm just kind of in a panic. I'm just kind of just all hearing about all this stuff and hearing how real it is. I just feel kind of, kind of weird. You mean that's your emotional? Oh yeah, I know it's my emotions. Okay. Because I'm just I'm trying uh, to. I'm taking this. How do you feel now? I have it in my hands. That's from 2010. Yeah, that's, that's from, it was much longer. She That's what's left of what she took. Okay. But there's no, no reaction whatsoever from you. Mm -hmm. From, from, you can feel from them. No. You think that they're hiding? No. They're here. Huh? Do you think they're here? Or they're oh hiding? yeah, they're here. Do you feel like they're, they're ticked off? Oh yeah. Um, basically what I would do is, because I don't want to do anything that would make things worse for you from health lines. Okay. Um, I want to take it slow. I want to make it, I don't know, because you're, you're still Catholic, right? I, I feel that see your back. Mm -hmm. You need a pill? Yeah, maybe a pill. Uh, we can gather up mm -hmm. as much evidence as, as we can and we can go over and see a priest and together we can talk to him. And if need be, if you don't believe it, well, I can make him come up right for him. Um, yeah, the last priest I talked to just said was like he come to the home and did like a blessing. He went in each room and he just kind of like set up a blessing. He says, I'm just going to tell them to go back home. That's how he treated me, like I'm just crazy. And then he even made a comment, you might want to see a psychologist. And I'm like, you have no idea at all what we're dealing with. You're not... Okay. Yeah. Did you hear that? You oh. didn't hear that? I hear a lot of stuff. You didn't hear that hiss? You didn't hear that hiss? Oh. I guess. I didn't you didn't hear that hiss? Seriously? Mm -hmm. Did you hear the hiss? Yes. I'm hearing too much. My ears. I get that. You heard the hiss? Run. Yes. I didn't just imagine that. No, oh, I heard it. Did you hear it? We just gather up evidence, go before the priest, and just and talk to him. But when I get you 
strong, you know, get you strong to pull through it, get you, um, so, you're ready to do battle, because this isn't my fight, it's not God's fight, it's your fight, and it's your, your, it's your free will to want to get God in your life, to, and whatever power he has, to want to help you in this. You're the one that has to say, I am Amy, and I am, I don't want this in my life anymore, and you got to want it, you got to get your mind into it. Do you, do you think, honestly, that your mind is in it? Do I, I do, I do, but I just, I feel so beaten down by everything that's going wrong in my life that it has me back into a corner where I'm at a disadvantage because everything has taken a toll on me emotionally, and... You know, I just, I feel like when this takes over, it's just like, I feel like it's just controlling everything, everything in my life. And I feel like I can't get out of the rope that I'm in. I just, I can't. And I know that it's going to take inner strength to battle it, but it's like, where do I find that? You know, I know it's in God. that I have um you be me standing back you make it purpose too. Huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> you okay? You had it? You're trying to come forward? Go down. Get out of here. No. Leave this house. No. Go down. Get out of here. Now. Go down in Jesus' name. Get out of here. I Hurt. said go down. Go down. Take your hands off me. Go down. Take your hands off me. Go down. No. Go down. No, you grow. Go down. Go down now. Stay with me. Go down. Stay there, Jesus name. Sorry. Go down! Go down! 
get the garbage can? <laughs> yeah, probably should. Let's see if there's a trash can. If you're coming out, you go where Jesus wants you to go. I command you to go where Jesus wants you to go. If you're coming out, Okay, and there you have it. Um, that is the audio of that uh, deliverance session. And um, you know, it's not always like in the movies, um, but it, it can be, depending on the strength of the demons or how many there are in there, in, in a person. And in this case, we believe that there were only three, and they were called spirits, and they were pretty strong. Um, the first uh, type of deliverance that I tried to use on her was we actually we actually baptized her and she felt great and, but that was just a uh, a temporary fix and they actually came back and this this session we believe that they actually got cast out and she actually uh, she moved away her and her daughter and uh, we did pretty well um, so that you hear the, the heard the intelligence come forward 
They got uh, very ticked off with what we were doing, threatening us that we had to leave. You can tell that the fear in in the demons were was there because of what we were doing, and we were trying to help her spiritually. And um, you could hear the hiss, um, and her and and Clay had heard the hiss. And uh, you can hear the, the mannerisms of that what she was going through when they were coming forward and when they left. Um, the intelligence came forward and had threatened me and everybody there, trying to tell us to leave. Um, of course, it was it, it cursed at me a couple of times, and um, you know it. it did change her voice a little bit, even though you could tell that was her. So they're not always, when they come forward, um, a complete change. It's they're using what's there, basically the the person's voice box and the body, and uh, they're doing what they can do. And when when they came forward, they were actually just sitting there and trying to mock and trying to you know uh, cause fear which like I said before John as a demonologist me as an exorcist and Clay as an exorcist we weren't afraid um, and we, we kept our composure we were just more concerned for her health and well-being because we knew that she had a heart condition we were going to try to press the envelope. We just wanted to get enough evidence. I was going to help John to get the evidence so that we could take it to the Saginaw Diocese and, and try to uh, get more, psych, uh, more of a, more, a, a psychiatrist involved as well, uh, someone with a medical background like that, and so that we can initially uh, help the Catholic priest to get an exorcism going to try and help to get through all the red tape that was the plan but unfortunately it turned out into a different way in which equalism was used and the power of God uh, forced them out they got really scared and left so that's pretty much what it's like it can be like um, this was only a half hour, so this type of uh, deliverance took a, took a half hour for these demons to be cast out. Sometimes it can take hours, sometimes it can take months. It's just uh, trying to get help the person to get more prepared for the initial fight. And so there's a lot of counseling involved, there's a lot of uh, helping them, guiding them through the scriptures to get spiritually strong, to get with God, and so they get in that preparedness. So when the exorcism comes, if it leads to that, um, then the exorcist has to fast and pray um, get, to get into tone with the Holy Spirit and to keep, uh, you know, so that nothing can attach to the exorcist. Uh, and and um, pretty much help help the person to cast out the, the spirits that's in them. So that's pretty much what it's like. And so these, keep in mind, these demons that were in her were portraying a dead person. And they were actually just acting out the part to the family and uh, they were saying that it actually sounded like the boy but then as you can tell from the audio here it wasn't the boy so the scriptures are correct the demons do disguise themselves as dead people when we die we either go to heaven or hell that's it there is no room in the Holy Scriptures to say that we walk the earth when we die. Demons, on the other hand, nine parts of them went to the place of condemnation, according to the Book of Jubilees. It's a 
apocrypha book, but you know it gives an idea of what God did. He created Sheol, placed place, placed them in hell. Hell was actually prepared for the fallen angels and all the evil spirits. And one one part of those of the whole of demons was allowed to stay on earth, and they they walk the earth. And they've been here for thousands of years and Satan has perfected his craft to to deceive us. I know a lot of people in the paranormal community, a lot of people out there want to believe that that Uncle Bob or Aunt Janet, cousin, cousin Eddie are out there walking around looking over them or somebody has spirit guides but it is not true at all and I hope this audio of this deliverance of this ecbolism opens your eyes to that you know what that kind of doctrine of dead people out there walking around is not true and what you're going into in a haunted home is not full of dead people. They're evil spirits disguised as dead people right? because they were watching them the whole time so they can mimic and hopefully somebody, some sucker, can come in and fall for that deception and then they can grab onto their lives and be part of their reality. Unfortunately this lady and her family uh, got suckered into that deception and it led to this demonic possession. So um, I'll try to release more audio of some exorcisms I've done and so that way it can not only teach you but also help to educate you on um, you know how demons operate how they work what they do and how you can heal people maybe even heal yourself maybe you have a demon so i hope this helps and i uh, hope it helps you to understand and helps you to get a grasp on more of what uh, what demons are like. And uh, a lot of people involved in this deliverance have a psychological background. Um, I have been to school for psychology. Uh, John knows psychology and Clay knows psychology. And uh, we work with um, psychiatrists, psychologists, and uh, know, know people who, who knew how to help with a psychological back background. And uh, I won't allow anybody in on an exorcism who wants to help without having some sort of psychological background so they know what's going on in the, the person's mind. So, so I hope you in somehow enjoyed that. I know it uh, can be a little freaky to listen to uh, a deliverance and um, but this is all educational. This is this was a real deliverance and I don't I don't usually release um, audio video that kind of thing to the public uh, but I made a, made, I'm making an exception so because of this doctrine that's going around of speaking with the dead and it's not true. So all right well have a have a great evening and, and God bless and Heavenly Father, we come before you and ask Lord that um, you know our listeners listening to this could you know, get an idea of what evil spirits are like and how to battle them and hope that you can give them strength to help others that are suffering from demons or possession and um, forgive us Lord of our sins forgive us of our trespasses and lead us to your light 
in your word through your word in Jesus name Amen have been listening to the exorcist podcast a production of haggard enterprises 2021